So we are sitting under the shade of big, beautiful mango trees and picnic table and a blue, blue Hawaiian cosmic sky and sharing about light body integration and attuning to the process of the light body merging with our form and in other transmissions that we've been sharing we talked about food and how food is one of the ways of connecting with the light body coming into the form we had a beautiful full moon ceremony here on the island at the beautiful Halle home where we are in sanctuary and in the ceremony we sipped rose tea and munched on delicious organic raw chocolate rose petal lavender raw organic chocolate and this is how we brought the light body in on the full moon together in a very sensual process between the spirit and the form and recognizing that the light body integration is a very sensual process as in senses all of the senses are amplified and lit up and as the light body is filling the physical vessel it is literally pushing the consciousness out of the carbon based form and into a new stream of consciousness so it's like a magical process that happens through the reciprocity or it's like a reciprocal uh, process that is going on so we may not even be consciously aware of what is occurring unless we place our focus and our attention on our experience of the physical form and this is uh, a time to really invite all of us to be deeply aware of placing our focus inward and making astute observations of what we are experiencing in the form so we were talking about food and I was sharing that I have discovered that my light body really loves enjoying food and after our beautiful 14 day water fast over the Lions Gate miracle coordinate there was really no sense of urge to eat food anymore and so food became a new experience of celebration of senses of exploration of the physical form the physical realms and tuning in to discover what our light body really loves and nurturing those aspects of the self because when we recognize that we are light in form informed by our oversoul and monadic consciousness 
all of the old quotation mark rules fall away, like the concepts about eating food. Eating food, we gain weight, or we need to eat more food because we don't weigh enough, or we need to eat less food to lose weight, all those concepts just around the topic of food alone or survival. We need to eat to survive. And so this is a time when we can really test those beliefs and discover that the belief that we need something from outside the form is not real. So as we test our limits in those realms of consciousness and discover that we are sovereign spirit in the form with no needs, then we can begin the joyous process of actually we had a little chicken just jump up on the picnic table here. It wanted to, and its light body wanted to enjoy the process of nibbling on our vegetarian rolls. Yeah, we can uh, begin to then get to know our light body and celebrate senses and form. This is a really significant part of the process is, you know, religions taught us that it was about denial of the form, denial of the flesh, denial of the body. And that distortion of the consciousness had a lot of spiritual people on the path think that the journey is about leaving the form or denying the form. So we like to uh, consider it more like testing out our capacity in the form rather than denying. You have a little friend by you. <laughs> so cute little chicken is now sitting on the seat <laughs> so cute its light body is totally engaged with us yeah so it's about learning the capacity of holding center holding stillness in the form holding zero point and then allowing this birthing to come in or this resurrection this remembrance you know this is where the joy really begins to flow from is not the denial of the form once we have surpassed our attachment to the form then the process is to really bring the light body into the form and go into a very physical experience from the perspective of the light body to discover the things that the light body really loves because the light body is the codes of our true essence our causal body was the soul that held the karma and all of that has fallen away. Along with the causal body, the soul. So then we move into the buddhic body, which is the bliss state. And then the atma and the monadic process is where we're at if we are bringing the light body into the form. So this phase is very significant to be connected to the senses, the realms of the senses, to touch, to taste, to smell, 
all of the senses that we're not even aware that we have, our telepathy, our energy bodies that are communing at a distance, because there is no distance, but really tuning into the essence of love. And it's a shift because the mind had us connected to things that we might have thought we loved from the place of the mind in a world of the mind. But when the mind and the heart merge, this super abundant energy begins to flood the form and there is a knowing, a gnosis of truth, of romance, of true love. The condition of creation that unifies all of us in all of the realms. And beyond the form, and this is why the guidance showed on the full moon when we were in a uh, transmission ceremony with beautiful Ohana that joined us on the full moon here in Mu. The guidance showed that the personalities the the blueprints that we were in the polarized blueprints were like costumes that we put on conditions that we gave ourselves to test ourselves to navigate expansive realms of consciousness and the blueprints created conditions, they created um, pressure for us to expand and grow. And on the night of the full moon, the guidance showed the costumes releasing, the personalities, the egos releasing as a collective consciousness, the lesser Akash that held the memories of history and herstory and all those other experiments in form that we played out on the earth plane. So one of the things that we've always said is um, we got deeply into the understanding of DNA and human blueprints and we used to say we are going to show you your blueprint but you're not your blueprint and I'm a blueprint buster. Because what I started to discover on the path of unity is that the only thing that was keeping people separate The only thing that was keeping true divine union separate was personalities and egos that were attached to the form. And so we could witness beautiful love relationships that could not be in existence together in duality because the blueprints did not fit together like puzzle pieces fitting together and so in the world of polarity true love was denied to pretty much most who incarnated on the earth plane of duality and that was part of What we came to transform was to complete the journey through the blueprints of self-discovery so that the ego identity could be shed 
gorgeous bird flying overhead with a long white tail. We are lying on our back looking at the sky. <clears throat> so, yeah, the guidance showed on the full moon the completion of the new moon promise, which was the Mercury retro went direct if we want to look at it from the place of the planetary influences of the form. Mercury went direct on the night of the new moon, the corn moon. And the star knowledge bundles and the Kota tradition. The night to go out and pray for the earth. It's July 31st. Pray for the earth. Unsi Maka. The ascension. The liberation of Unsi Maka. To be liberated from projections of separation or suffering and so on. And Tunkasila grandfather came in on the full moon coordinate to unify with Unsi Maka in the presence of great spirit. And the guidance showed on the full moon. Thank you, sound effects department. The guidance showed on the full moon uh, that the costumes and blueprints were falling off. In fact, it showed that they fell off instantly. And it showed twin ray light bodies coming together instantly. And that is what is happening in the form now as we come into our... And this guy is tuning in. He's like, you got it, sister. Hi, brother. Hey, brother. Yes, the guidance showed the instant unification of the twin ray light bodies. <laughs> <laughs> Sound effects department is very excited. And um, now those partnerships coming into form en masse as we integrate our light body dynamics so back to the topic of food it was so interesting to wake up this morning and after doing our water fast yesterday was um, a beautiful day at the Halle where we're staying and it's a Satnam Saturday event, communal event that goes all day with ecstatic dance and kirtan and healing circles and all kinds of beautiful things. And our dear friend Dan came in and made wonderful raw food and food for everyone. And my light body informed me that it likes to eat. And um, so I ate a lot, what I would consider a lot. And what the guidance is showing is there is no such thing as a lot when you're in your light body, because nothing is real in terms of the carbon form. And the guidance was like, just try it and see what happens. And so I munched and munched and munched throughout the miracle coordinate day. And just establishing that relationship with light in a new way and recognizing that always when we are munching we are munching on our emotions our thoughts and our feelings not really munching on food because food isn't real and it doesn't exist so I chose to munch on bliss And when I woke in the miracle morning, I noticed that my form felt very filled, very full. 
and the guidance pointed out again that it's not really a carbon-based form that I am relating to anymore. It was showing me that my light body was filled up. So these are all little handholds of how to begin to shift our relationship to the realm of the senses and to shift the perception of going, oh, my stomach is very, very full to just recognizing that it is actually a sensual experience, not an actual carbon-based physical experience that we're having. And from this place, it's where miracles uh, begin to occur. Because now the consciousness has liberated itself from the bondage of time and gravity. And it's starting to experience itself as a consciousness rather than a form, rather than an ego, rather than a personality. Now the experience becomes an experience of sensuality, senses. And that is the realm that we explore from this light body embodiment. And as we come into that very still place that many of we are experiencing, very blissful and very calm and very peaceful. Everything is shifting. Everything. Many, many people are having very unique interdimensional, multidimensional experiences. Like what we are noticing is that versions of we aren't sure what's real and what is the dream. I think I mentioned this before that great movie, that Robin Williams movie. What dreams may come. So beginning to open to what dreams are possible. Beyond the personality and the ego and the mind. And the form that we have been releasing. This is just the beginning. and rose tea. And lots of hand holding. (laughs) Where's Mr. Sound Effects Department? Come on, little rooster, where did you go?